I am your host, Fred Nettles, and this is The Segment. Hey, what's going on, Mike? How you doing, man? I'm all right. How you doing? Doing great. Doing great. I want to thank you for joining the segment today. Um, I want to start off by giving you a little my a little insp- my inspiration behind starting this show. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, the guys that like of LeBron James, Maverick Carter, Rich Paul. Those gentlemen, they they've recently started a platform where you're able to um, control your own narrative in a sense. Uh, whether it's marketing, media, all of your branding, etc., that's the reason why I started this show and, and the premise behind it. I want to be able to uh, give individuals a platform to uh, highlight their major major contributions contributions in their respective uh, community and uh, and just and just be able to um, for them to shed their light on. On, on on everyone that's listening and and watching. Well, that's awesome, yeah. man. I, I appreciate you having me on. Oh yeah, um, and so let's let's just get right into it. Just give us a little information on who, who is Mike Espy. Uh you know I'm a I'm a Mississippi made guy. Okay. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Grew up, went to New Hope Baptist Church uh, in preschool. From then, went to St. Andrews, kindergarten through seventh grade. After that, I went to public school, uh, Madison Central. But man, I'm just a Mississippi guy, man, through and through. Have rich uh, family roots in Mississippi. Um, you know, my, my grandfather started the first hospital for black people uh, here in Yazoo City, Mississippi, called Afro-American Sons and Daughters. Uh, obviously, you know, my dad is, is, is well known. He was congressman and secretary of agriculture for Bill Clinton. And uh, and I played football. I played football for Ole Miss uh, and for the Washington Redskins. Uh, but I'm a Mississippi guy, country boy, um, but a little city. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, you brought up family earlier. Tell me tell me about you know, how many your siblings, you know, si- you have, if you had any childhood Childhood, favorite childhood games, sibling, sibling rivalries, etc. Well, you know, I I have a my sister's three years older than me. Okay. Uh, you know, at times I was the younger, pestering little brother, uh, who used to chase my sister around everything that she did. Whenever she went over to a friend's house, I wanted to go. Um, you know, but you know, I have a lot of cousins. You know, I didn't have a big brother growing up, but I have uh, about four to five big cousins who I would call my brothers. Uh, but we would play, man. We would play football games and things like that. They would rough me up. I would actually attribute that to a lot of my instincts and and the way I played the game football because I was always trying to go against bigger, stronger, older people, um, and they did not cut me any slack. They would always like literally pummel me, uh, and but I would still always come back one more. Oh yeah. Let me ask you this: uh, transitioning from that to your to your high school football career. It's it's funny it's funny that I bring it up because I really I, I probably should have known this but I didn't know um, I looked up that of course in 1999 you guys were you went of course Madison Central of course, Jaguars the university <laughs> the university the university <laughs> you guys were the um, one of the only undefeated teams in Mississippi's history at 15 and 0 um, and just talk to me about how that helped shape your shape your 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 perspective on life and how did, how did this shape you as a man from 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 high school to the next level well I, I i'll say that that team was awesome uh in in every way imaginable you know we were 15 and 0 mm-hmm. uh we ended up obviously we're number one in the state but it, we ended up being number 10 in the country but just like every high school team mine especially we had players on the team that were better than the players who got the nor- notoriety yeah so you know we had five guys on that team go to the nfl uh, you had myself, we had Chris Spencer, who went first round to the Seattle Seahawks. We had Paris Harrelson, who went uh, second round to the 49ers. We had Doug Buckles, who went to the uh, Buccaneers. And we had Steven Guskowski, who is currently the kicker for the Patriots right now. Oh, yeah. Still, uh, he's arguably going to go down in the Hall of Fame. But one thing that I knew is, is we were all champions. Um, you know, it's one thing to talk it. It's one thing to live it. And... It was a, literally a team with self-discipline. Coach really didn't have to get on us too much because there was an expectation 
uh, for everybody that they need to be on time, do what they need to do, be where they needed to be. At such a young age. At such a young mm -hmm. age. And, you know, and we did have our have our players that kind of got out of line and things like that. But one thing that I knew is that as a team, we were going to bring them back in. Either we were going to bring them back in or they were going to be cast aside. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty much an easy decision mm -hmm. on what a, what a person wanted to do. There was no, we weren't letting anybody just ride the fence. But it taught me how to be a champion. It taught me, it it it, it helped me to to be accountable. Mm -hmm. um, it helped me to um, hold myself to a higher expectation. Um, and it helped me to 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 understand my role and my piece to a part to a whole and in that people the team depended on me yeah. and i wasn't going to let my team down of course of course i know we talked about perseverance accountability and uh, just taking on a lot at, at, especially at a young age uh talk to me about your your stint with the redskins of course and just going in man undrafted um having to prove yourself um and persevere um, and just overcome a lot of obstacles. Just, just talk, talk about that. Well, you know, right now is a is a is a very. It's the time. It's the yeah. time when the draft just just went on, mm -hmm. and you got a lot of free agents that are being picked up. You know, first off, I felt like I should have got drafted, just as every yeah. everybody feel like they should get drafted. My freshman and my sophomore year of college, I had really good years. Mm -hmm. I had Eli Manning as my quarterback. Uh, then my junior, and my senior, year, I really didn't have, to be honest, a quarterback. My quarterback, my junior and senior, ended up playing. Uh, seven years with the uh, with a couple teams, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a wide receiver. So that just kind of tells you what we had in yeah. the quarterback oh, yeah. position. Um, but it's, it's just like just like in high school, um, you know, those lessons carried me on through. Um, when I felt like I should have got drafted, but I didn't. You know, when I walked in the door, everybody knew who I was. Mm -hmm. uh, Polaroid. And everybody, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, and there were there were there were players that were like, "Man, you didn't get drafted," uh, but I didn't. But what I will say is, I walked in with an expectation that I was supposed to be there, mm -hmm. and I went to a rookie mini camp. And when I went to the rookie mini camp, it was a three day camp. Day one, there was probably about twenty receivers. Yeah. Day two, it was about ten receivers. Day three, it was about six receivers. So obviously, as the days went on, they were cutting people. Now me. You know, I was oblivious. You know, I was like, um, I was, I was oblivious to the fact that this was literally a camp where they were cutting people in the middle of the camp. Yeah. It's my first experience like that. I've never been a part of anything like that, or I've always been on the other side of it, being the guy that I knew that I had a guaranteed spot. But I would say that 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 kind of uh, naivete and that confidence in myself, uh, you know, carried throughout the camp, and like I knew I was supposed to be there. And so in my mind, there was no no earthly way that I would be cut from the team, which led to me, you know, making the team and, and, and helping me with a three year stint with the Redskins. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. You're currently the GM, the general manager here at the D1 facility in Madison, Mississippi. Yes. Uh, where, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it helps bring light to all the athletes um, that are getting unnoticed. Yes. You know, once once no stars to one star, two star. Um, all the way to four and five star guys, you know, they get to they get to come in, compete at a high level in order to help them uh, get to the next level, which is the collegiate level and beyond. Uh, just tell just tell me a little about a little more about the uh, facility. Well, when I was in high school, my my dad took me to a place similar to this, but it was in Boca Raton, Florida. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Fast Camp, and when he took me there. You know, I literally came back a different athlete. I went there obviously during the summers of high school ball. I came back a different athlete, uh, and I attribute that to obviously the training, the coaching, the techniques, the things that I was doing, but also the mindset. You know, what high school athletes typically do across the country, all they do is work out with the individuals who are at their school. I mean, that's, that's good, and you need that to build uh, team camaraderie, et cetera, and all that kind of stuff, but it's a big world out there. And you, they need to realize that they're just not competing with the guy to their left and their right. They're competing with everybody in the country at their particular position or particular teams across the country. Uh, so when I came back, like I said, I was just a different guy. So let's fast forward to, to what I'm doing here now. You know, that's what I want to bring here. I had to travel all the way to Florida to get it. Now athletes in the Mississippi, in the Mississippi area can come right here to D1 and they can get the, the, the same type of training that the NFL players get, the NBA players get, whatever their respective sport is. 
and they're going to train at a high level. They're going to compete at a high level. And one thing about going to a higher, higher level is when you do your off-season training, you're going to be practicing and training with people across the country. That's what we provide here. So we have people from uh, Madison Central training with guys from Clinton, whereas they're particularly their rivals. But when they walk in these doors, everybody's under the D1 umbrella and competing. If, if you will, talk more about, uh, because Ma Madison is your home. Yes. Like, like, yes. And so talk, talk a bit more about um, how does it feel internally to be able to change lives within the communities right here, setting the foundation in your hometown? It's amazing. When I was coming up, like I said before, these things weren't here. Uh, and to be able to, in my hometown, to be, be able to affect and change people's lives and in some ways change the trajectory of, of athletes' lives, it's a blessing. You know, I, I, I get to, to train up the guys that went to my high school. I get to train up guys in the, in the deep heart of Jackson, Mississippi, who wouldn't otherwise get that opportunity. And one thing that, that should be known about Mississippi is, you know, per capita, Mississippi has the most players in the NFL. But we're also the most under-recruited, uh, we're the most overlooked. And, you know, people don't really still respect what Mississippi has to bring to the table in terms of sports and to, to a certain degree, a lot of other things. So, you know, I'm here to help try to change that narrative and to help these kids. So when they get on that bigger platform, they get that opportunity to get in front of that scout, um, that they're going to shine and they're going to be better than a guy from Georgia, Texas, or Alabama. Um, but not only that, you know, Mississippi, there's a there's a phrase called Mississippi made. And that means something that means something. I think we have a lot of tradition. We have a lot of uh, uh, pride. And I just want to help bring that out. Grace. And speaking of being Mississippi made, you are currently teamed up with a gentleman by the name of Demario Davis. He's a starting linebacker for the New Orleans Saints. You guys have a seven on seven team called the Devoted Dreamers. Uh, just tell me more about how you guys decided to collaborate to, to you know, to, to bring the guys together. So, you know, I got reached out to uh, by DeMario, um, by his by his cousin, Anthony McGee and Shea Hodge. And, you know, what it is, DeMario has a foundation called the Devoted Dreamers Foundation, which there are a lot of different components to it. And 707 is just an element of it. The football is an element of it. But... Uh, you know, how do we affect and change people's lives and use football as a platform? Because that's what everybody loves. They love football. It's so like, how do we use football as a platform to get the attention in every other element and aspect of these kids' lives? So, you know, DeMario uh, is a great, a great Christian man, a great leader. He has a dream. He has a vision. Um, and it's, it's that all of these gentlemen on the team and not just on the team outside in general they're influencers first influencers um so what we do is we have the program has involved academics academic sessions act prep fellowship uh mentorship sessions and obviously the last is football um so you know i think the last thing that we are really worried about to be honest with you is the football uh, but at the same time, we do happen to be the number one team in Mississippi and the number 12 in the country. Well, Mike, man, uh, thank you for joining this segment today. Uh, and lastly, is there anything you'd like to, like any, like any prospective athlete to know? Anything worth having takes hard work. And nothing is just going to come to you easy. So you have to put the work in to achieve your ultimate goals, whether that be sports, whether that be academics, that's life in general. But at D1, you know, what we do, we service the athlete. Everybody's an athlete, whether we're talking about adults, whether we're talking about kids. But when you walk through these doors, I guarantee you, I promise you, um, that you're going to leave a changed person, whether that's you're trying to get in shape, whether that's you're trying to, trying to become that, that one-star, two-star, three-star, four-star, five-star athlete, or you just really just trying to get reps in a game. You know, what we do here, everybody here on the coach staff has played at a high level. So when you walk in the door, you're getting it from the experts. I've been there. I know what you want to achieve. And it's not necessarily in sports that might happen for you, but I will help you reach your maximum capacity 
your maximum limit, your cap, and whatever it is. My brother, he's not an athlete, guess what? He just enrolled in Harvard the other day. And I'm just as proud of that as I'm proud of any of my athletes going to the NFL. All right, Mike, thanks, man. Thank you. They told me to be careful of the company I keep yeah. When I'm just trying to own a couple companies and be Everything that they said I would I'm doing things that they said I could I just gotta make them see One time for the underdog Two time for the struggle Three time for the pain One time for the underdog We the one that got the power When it's time to make a change One time for the underdog One time for the underdog One time for the underdog One time for the one time for the underdog yeah.